But um, I mean, opening statement. What are you gonna do? Yeah, um, excited for today. You know, I think the the thing I always look at as a head coach, right, is like this is the culmination for them, uh, especially the guys that didn't get go to the combine. The four guys that went to the combine, uh, the three that performed, obviously performed at a level that speaks for itself. But this is a chance for all these other guys that didn't get to go to you know, showcase what they are. And um, for us as a program, I think we were less than 20 teams that are here my first pro day, which obviously were a group of guys I hadn't coached. And then last year, I think we were a little bit uh, like maybe 22, 23 teams. And then this year, um, we literally heard confirmation that we had all 32 teams early on and a, a lot of personnel. And uh, I think it's another great indicator of where our program's going. Um, and excited for these guys today. Guys put up the numbers at the combine. Brett, what's that say about? You know, um, first, not shocking. I think that, that um, one of the things we do here in our program that's a little bit unique is we never time them on a 40. Um, I tell them that when I came in. We tell them that every year. Uh, when you run a 40, it's really one of your highest percentage pulls of getting soft tissue. So um, we, never we never train or time the 40 as a program. Uh, and we typically had guys go at the combine and perform very well. So but the numbers really weren't shocking to me. Um, I knew that, uh, honestly, that Quan was going to jump very, very well. I, I thought Sid and Chase would run well better than people thought they would. Um, Spoon, I think he's going to work out April 5th and uh, perform at a high level. I think it's a great indicator to who they are. Um, obviously, they've been blessed genetically, but um, you can't go train somewhere for six to eight weeks and do that. That's from uh, what Tank, Tank did here. I think if you asked our guys, one of the best parts of our program is what we do in strength and conditioning, and I think that's another great indicator of why. We've been doing this a long time, but how do you watch guys, like at the Combine or whatever else? Do you watch it as a fan? Do you watch it as a coach? Yeah, it's a different perspective. I used to, um, since I was never invited to the Combine, right, I used to watch in awe. Um, and then I remember going to the Combine a couple times as a head coach when I was at Wisconsin and Arkansas. And then my view really changed when I uh, went as a coach, right? And, uh, with the Patriots organization. I remember going to my first weigh-in with Coach Belichick, and, um, you know, I remember specifically thinking we were there, and I had, had become the head coach at Arkansas and was just newly out of that, and I remember there were four DBs uh, from Alabama at the Combine, and I'm like, man, I don't think I've ever had more than one, uh, maybe two, and they had four, and then now we had three, right? So I think it's a great indicator. I look at just your numbers, right? Um, uh, what it means as a program, because if you got players going to the combine, and especially if they got guys that are performing at high levels, it's it's a uh, it speaks volumes about your program. Um, uh, for me individually, you know, you cheer for certain guys, obviously uh, that you compete against, guys that you respect, guys that play the game the right way, and you kind of want to see where they are with the physical number. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag of everything. Yeah, we we are we. We truly haven't had this luxury before since I've been here. Um, you know, obviously Kirby did some things last year, but when you had the volume of numbers and now the content of it, um, you know, when you talk about guys uh, uh, that perform not only just at their position, but really all time, right? I think uh, some of the numbers our guys put up with all time history for Illinois players at the combine. Uh, there's been a lot of really good players, right? Uh, so we maximize anything we can in recruiting and, and uh, uh, not just now, but we'll, we'll bring it up. Uh, obviously when we have kids here on official visits, in April, May, and June, we'll show them how our guys perform compared to others, um, and not just guys at the combine. Like you know, I'm sitting out there today, and I told our, our group of scouts and coaches when we we're in the team meeting today, I said, you know, watch these guys today. And I said Isaac D'Arcangelo, like he was a guy that didn't get invited to the combine. He's going to put up combine numbers that would be very impressive if he was an in indie, right? And the advantage is you get to see him here. Uh, not everybody gets to see that, so we use it to kind of help promote our guys that didn't get to combine as well. Yeah, you know, um, we had a plan in place to try and get him for another year of eligibility because he didn't play during the COVID year uh, because he was a transfer in. In reality, he probably should have played that year because they didn't end up giving it back to him. Uh, the NCAA didn't allow that to happen. So uh, he was a guy that we were holding on hope might get another year. But when that got denied, you know, he went full speed into his preparation for the combine. Um, the thing about him, I think his best football is in front of him. Uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a player, I think the first game we started him against Michigan, he became our leading tackler in that game, right? And just was very impactful also on the special teams. He's what we call a four-core guy, so he started on every special teams unit, the, the four-core punt, punt return, kickoff, kickoff coverage. And when you have value like that, that, the NFL really appreciates that. What kind of feedback are you getting from the NFL about the four guys that combined? Everybody, everybody no, no, Nothing but positive. Okay. Um, I think one of the things that – 
I learned in the NFL is a lot of times teams won't give you information, right, because right. they don't want to tip off when someone may get selected or not get selected. So uh, I kind of keep those positions, those conversations private just because out of respect to them, they maybe ask me some things that I can tell where they're leaning or what they're thinking, but I also don't want to put a, 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 our guys or, or a team at a disadvantage. But it's been overwhelmingly positive. And, and ironically, obviously, you guys see the numbers and you see the testing. Uh, the, the thing that made me uh, feel the best, and I told our staff this, uh, you know, over the course of the last several days, is the feedback I've received from, from scouts that are in the room to assistant GMs to GMs to head coaches is just the way our guys interviewed. Um, they all talked about football one-on-one. They talked about the impact that that had on their lives, uh, especially as a football player, and I think that makes you as a coach feel really good. Illinois hasn't had a top ten pick since 96. <laughs> So Rice and Hardy, two, three. Pretty uh, good. Devin looks like he's going to be top ten, maybe. I mean, how big would that be for you or for the team? For, obviously for him, but for just where you guys are. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say two things, right? Like, just happy for him, right? Like, if, if uh, Spoon uh, ends up, sounds like he'll be one of our highest drafted kids, wherever that is, it's just awesome, right? Like, uh, let his journey be his journey. Don't try to label it to any others. Obviously, Hardy and Rice were – two extremely talented football players that, that went on to do some good things um, uh, beyond here as well. So I think the good thing about Spoon, his best football is in front of him, and wherever that destination is on draft day, that's his story, and he'll own it. Uh, I think Quan, Sid, and Chase will probably be the next three guys off our board, right? Um, and, and I think um, every one of those guys has made themselves into who they are, right? They, they, they've put in the diligence. And the things I, I told our, our, our group when we got together in there, um, as a coach, like those four guys that went to the combine and the guys that you're evaluating here today, as good of players as they are, right? And and to me, they're good people, right? But they help change this place into something that we hopefully are gravitating to. They help me change uh, just the way of thinking. You know, everybody wants to win, but um, I think they began to feel this year that they could win, right? And uh, that was a big step in the right direction. Brett, you have the unique perspective of both sides of this. Mm -hmm. So what is important for these guys in the pre-draft process for be consistent, right? Like, so, um, you know, obviously the film speaks for itself, but in the testing, right, if they were able to put together two 40s, not just one, right? Like, just consistency speaks volumes, and it just takes one. Like, I literally, uh, I said this to a couple di couple guys over the last week that didn't get invited to the combine that are here today. I said, hey, it just takes one team to like you, right? Like, whether they grab you in a draft or whether they grab you in free agency, it just takes one team to think that you would fit into their environment. Um, and... Um, that that to, that to me is the key to them is just to, to be at their best. We talk about three things every day, and the third thing being to be, be the best you. And if that happens, usually good things happen. You mentioned it, but you know, is this a showcase for Tank and his guys? And I remember he was one of your first hires coming yeah. here, and it seems like the last two years the pro guys have really said that this has been a really well run or well, pro guy kind of deal. You, well, the, Tank. yeah, just running the pro day is one thing, but just the uh, the proof is in the pudding, right? right. Um, Again, I think our guys, if you interviewed those four guys who went to the Combine, uh, I think the foundation of what they did is from Tank and his crew. And I, I made that point to the group the other day that, like, this isn't happened by chance that these numbers are being put out there. They've, they've had, you know, basically two years of, of um, guidance. Uh, even though we don't run a 40, we train every day to maximize a 40, right? Um, you know, we try to do it in an intelligent way to prevent injury. But... Um, uh, we do a lot of these same drills, the three cone, the pro agility, the vertical. We do all that stuff every year uh, at the beginning and end of every uh, training cycle. So it, it, it shows these guys how much they've improved and where they can go. Can you ask a spring ball question? Yeah. Your quarterback that's uh, leaving, unfortunately. Yeah, Tommy. You got what's go, what's it looking like there as quarterback? What you know, I think he, he really opened some eyes at the All-Star game he was at. Okay. Um, you know, I think uh, – one of the things that was unfortunate, right, we got clearance through the Big Ten offense as he, was, he had gotten approved to play another year and was told that there were kind of a rubber stamp to, to get the uh, uh, extra year through the NCAA. And then when they denied it, I think that was such a gut punch for him. And, and to be quite honest, as coaches, we had kind of, once we got word from the Big Ten, it was cleared. We felt good, right? For me as a recruiter, I'd kind of got out of the portal uh, business as quarterback thinking he was going to be back. Um, so I think there was a little bit of that December phase of like it was just a lot of transition. But once he jumped into full-blown NFL preparation, you know, I heard from coaches immediately at the All-Star game about what he did, um, how he managed the game, how he played the game. Uh, and then really I think his stock's been rising, and today's a big part. As spring, as spring ball starts, what are you looking at in quarterback for you now? 
going forward? Obviously, we brought some new faces. You right. know, Luke's here, uh, 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 Paddock's here. Um, we brought in Cal. Um, Donovan Leary has been been awesome, right? So, uh, some of the guys that here have, um, you know, uh, continued to move forward. I think it's been awesome. Art has been now as a coach, right? So he's been instrumental in uh, kind of giving us a gap between the player to the coach. Um, uh, but I would say overall, just like every position, we're just looking to eager to get on the field. They changed the rules a little bit, so we've been able to do some some accelerated walkthroughs with 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 tempo and, and uh, um, allowing our offense and defense to go each other without going on you know pads. So um, it's been a good fun two or three weeks here to see the growth that they've had, and uh, I'm excited every spring. But I think this year, anytime you have a new signal caller, uh, you know, and get to replace some of these skilled players, um, it's it's a it's a fun time to us. Um, We'll go on spring break next week. We're going to hit the ground running and see where it goes. For competition at DB, um, is, is that fun? Because I know you got talent, young yeah. guys back there, but obviously some big roles. To I think in the back end, especially, is getting the guys in the right positions, yeah. right? Like, you know, like Xavier Scott. Do we play him at corner? Do we play him at nickel? Do we play him at safety? Uh, you know, Taz had the, the uh, wrist issue, but he's going to be in spring ball. Um, you know, a, guy, a couple guys that have really come on and, and, and done some nice things during the last end of the fall. And then obviously, when we had the two guys sit out of the – uh, bowl game to have them uh, be able to showcase their skills. Um, it's just, it's been fun. Um, but I, I told Coach Henry and Coach Vanilla, let's let's kind of approach this as ground zero. Let's see where our guys are best at. Figure that out, and then we continue to build around it up front. We've kind of went from a defense that uh, was back end heavy of talent, right, to a, a front uh, a defensive. Now that the front has a lot of really good players that are returning, um, and and now how do we marriage that together? Um, and then for me personally, you know, we have four new coaches in the building. Uh, Charlie Bowen and Antonio have been a huge hit on the defensive side. Our kids have been raving about them. Uh, and then obviously just a couple weeks ago to add Robbie and, and uh, Thad, uh, those guys have had made, it, made an immediate impact not just on our staff but with our players. Do you and Coach Money want to come out of – you want to have a quarterback soon or does it matter? Um, I think we want the best out, uh, answer, right? And, and right. you know, what that means, that might mean two weeks into it. It might mean in two weeks out from the, from the first game. I, I don't really – uh, you know, obviously we've been together now going to third year. You realize I don't try to rush any decision, just make the best decision whenever it's possible. And, and uh, whenever that happens, it should be pretty clear. When you're when you get the starting quarterback, it's usually not only, you know, do coaches know, every player in the building knows.